All right, guys, we're gonna be talking about the macro of your event. Macro is the big picture, okay? So we're gonna be talking about the big picture. It's, under, it's good to understand the macro and the micro. So we're first gonna start with the macro, okay? At the end of the day, here's what all leaders have in common. They have a vision. Okay, they have a vision of what's possible. It's clear, it's concise. Okay, they know exactly what's gonna look like. They even visualize themselves being there. There's a saying called YOLO, you only live once. But actually, it's not we only live once. I believe we live twice. We visualize it first in our mind and then we actually live it in real life. Okay, most people wake up in their business on the Monday and go, oh, what am I doing this week? What am I marketing? What am I trying to sell? And as we talked about in video one, they're just focused on the money. The longer you plan in advance in your business, the more certainty you're gonna create in your business. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. The longer you plan and the further you plan out in your business, okay, the more certainty you're gonna have in your business. Okay, it's not planning a week out. It's not waking up on fucking Monday and deciding what am I doing. It's what's going on this month, what's going on this quarter, and even what's going on next year. We are already planning out 16 months in advance in our business, guys. We're already talking about it. We're already getting things together, and this is where you want to be. Okay, how would it feel to have consistent income coming in your bank account every single month? What would you do if you had more consistent income? How would your life be different? And the key to that, the key to solving that problem is planning in advance. Okay, so when people are planning for the first event, I usually say, hey, let's, let's commit. Let's, let's start a date right now, and I challenge you right now, right in this instant, right as you're listening to this video right now. I don't care if it's a Saturday night, Tuesday morning, Thursday morning, Thursday night, whatever it is, I want you to schedule an event right now. Again, it's the start that stops you. So first and foremost, you wanna schedule. And what I would say is you need to schedule an event six months out. Okay, six months out is where you wanna start. Okay, and the reason why I say that is because it'll give you plenty of time to work through everything that you need to work through. Okay, now as you continue to do events, now we can start to shorten up that time. Okay, I think I first, I think mine was around five months, okay, but I would say six months, okay, and the reason why I say plan it right now is now we can fuck around for the next month really deciding if we want to do this, but at the end of the day, you went to school, I went to school. What did you do when the teacher gave you a huge project? You waited till the last damn week to do something, didn't ya? Didn't ya? Okay, at the end of the day, having a date and sticking to it is very, very important. And so that's what I do in my business. I force myself to show up. I force myself to show up by putting these events and so to hell to high water, I know what's gonna happen Okay, the same way I know what's happened my entire life in school. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that I hit that due date, okay? Give yourself plenty of time. I had a client this year, they scheduled an event two out, to, two months out. It was a $60,000 uh, huge, huge event in Miami. They scheduled two months out and I was like, dude, I want to suggest it, but they went through it and what do they do? They follow through. Okay, you're gonna follow through on your commitments. And I would say another way to obligate yourself through this process is start telling people. Okay, because the more you tell people, the more you're gonna feel obligated to follow through on doing it. Okay, it's one of those little secrets to hacking your, uh, your human behavior. The more people you tell, the more you're committed on doing this. A lot of people, they just say, oh, I'm gonna do an event, but they don't tell anyone, and then they wonder why they keep skipping it. And as they keep skipping it, they keep skipping the, uh, the opportunity that they could be doing to make more influence, to make more income and to be creating more time freedom, okay? So schedule an event six months out. After this, now we can start to get it to every four months or every three months. I think where we're at right now, I think we're every six to eight weeks per event, okay? So you'll get the system down.
Okay, so in our last video, we've already covered the four W's. Why am I doing this? What's the way I'm doing this? Who is it for? What's the transformation? Maybe you've already thought of a name of the event. Maybe you've already thought of a slogan, okay, and all those things. Okay, now that we've really decided, okay, here's the event, here's what it looks like, now we gotta be thinking, what's the venue? Okay, so when we're talking about the venue, there's so many different ways to do this, okay? Again, my advice, that one thing I hope you're taking away from this video series is start small, move fast, okay? Some of your events might just start in your house or your apartment or a friend's house. I, uh, and I had this uh, personal trainer I was working with years ago and they were doing a nutrition classes at one of their clients' house. They were doing meal prep classes um, at a grocery store, okay? They were doing, uh, they were doing grocery store tours at a nearby, um, at a nearby grocery store, right? Like it doesn't have to cost money. And that's the thing that I think you need to understand. Okay. There's so many, it could be, um, it could be at a hotel. That's where we've hosted the majority of our events. Um, it could be an exposition center. We've done retreats and cruises over the years. Um, you could do it there. Anytime you're gathering people together, Okay, that's the key that I want you to take away. It could be a party, it could be a guy's night out, a girl's night out, it could be um, it could be a date night, it could be a, 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 golf, a golf tournament. You just want to be thinking, how do I gather people together? That's the biggest thing. I, I think the biggest mistake that people make is they look at our events or someone else that does something similar and they think that their event has to look like our event. No, it doesn't. And it honestly, it shouldn't look like our event. It should be next gen. It should be unique to you. It should be different than anyone else. And it should be innovative. Okay. It should be next gen. So think outside the box. Okay. Most people though, they will do something similar. Okay. Which is great, but you don't have to. It's about gathering people together. It could be a 4th of July um, event for, for all means. The more you can gather people together, the better. However, the main model I'm teaching you is how do we create transformation for our clients? So you're a personal trainer. Okay. You are uh, a life coach. Okay. You're a realtor. You're a loan officer. Okay. There's so many different avenues of which you could be gathering people together and helping them create results. Okay, it's so hard to get people's attention online. Okay, it just is. It's just so hard. So that's why I'm a huge advocate for doing events in person. Okay, so venue is so wide open. So I want you to get creative. And so we have um, small events at our house. We have bigger events at hotels. Uh, we've done cruises. Um, coming up, we have an event in Cabo. Um, not, not Cabo, Cancun, right? So there's so many different ways you could be doing this. So again, with this, so what I would do is I wouldn't get crazy. I wouldn't, you know, our client that did the $60,000 event, that wouldn't, that would be more of an exception rather than the rule. Okay. I think my first event, I think it was, I think I only invested like a thousand dollars total. And I was scared. I was scared. Oh my gosh, I just invested a thousand dollars. I was paying, um, uh, I think it was $200 for the room each day. It was a three-day event, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend. I was paying $200 for the room, and then I think I had to pay for videography and, and some other stuff, and it was like $1,000. And it doesn't have to be that much. It could be smaller, okay? It can be bigger. So when you're, when you're deciding what venue, okay, you can negotiate with these hotels. Hey, if we booked more... Um, if we booked more times to come back, could you give us a deal? Okay. If we had people coming into the event and they booked rooms, would you be able to give us a deal? So there's all different ways of negotiating. So with our retreats and our cruises, the more people we book within that cruise line or with that hotel, the bigger discount it'll create. And then also on some of them in the past, if we get to a specific number, they actually give us a free trip out of it. Okay, so these are some things that you want to look at, okay, when you're putting together your venue. So now, now we're getting into the actual setup. So if you're putting it together workshop style, okay, or seminar style, which is kind of like what we do, okay, the first uh, and biggest thing is music. 
okay? And a lot of these hotels and a lot of these venues, they're gonna have their own system within it. They just have something that you can plug in, you could bring your, um, you can come bring your wireless speakers and put them around the room. Uh, you can do what we do and buy the equipment and set it up. When we first started, we were actually just tapping into the hotel system. Okay, the pros of that is it's cheap. The cons of that, sometimes they're not always good and sometimes their IT guy don't know exactly how to work it. Okay, but you definitely want music. Music is what keeps the energy flowing. Okay, I, told, I tell my uh, IT guy, Eric, there's music playing all the time. Music radiates energy. You want a lot of emotion and motion happening. So make sure there's music. So I'd say that would be priority number one. Okay, priority number two is you want a photographer and or, I would say and, I'd, actually I'd say videographer first and or, no, and, a photographer okay one of the when I first started doing events I actually didn't make a lot of money doing the actual event where I made the money is now that a person came to the event okay they were able to share that video online and so someone that was watching that then reached out to me okay so video is king guys the old saying is pictures or it didn't happen the new saying is video or it didn't happen video is just king okay and this is um, a mistake that I think I made early on is I wasn't as consistent with the video. Um, I would hire brand new videographers that didn't really understand what they were doing. Okay, so this is one part of it. I definitely would make sure you don't go cheap in. Yes, it's going to cost you a little bit more. Okay, when people think of like organic marketing, they think it's free. Okay, it's not free. You're still paying for it. You're paying it for your time. You're doing it yourself. Okay, one of the easiest ways to scale your business is to start replicating yourself. And the easiest way to replicate yourself is through videos. Okay, video reels is just king. You need to have someone or some company helping you do this. Okay, so music, okay, would be first. Okay, second would be uh, video. Okay, and then like after that, then you can start investing into the sound system. You could also hire a company as well. What I've kind of done over the years is I've just bought the equipment slowly. And so when people come to our event, like, oh my gosh, I have to, it has to look exactly like this. No, it doesn't. Okay, where I started, okay, was a marker. What I have right here, started with a marker and I started with a board and a video guy. Okay, that's where I started. I started with a room, I started with a marker, and I started with a board, and I drew pretty pictures, okay? The investment that you're making first and foremost in these events is your own transformation, is being good at your craft, whether you're a nutritionist, a personal trainer, um, you're in insurance, you are in uh, real estate, whatever the case might be, that's your first investment. People start investing into the have, okay, or in the doing, the first thing you're investing, you're investing into your own being. At that point in time, I had hired a lot of speaker coaches, I had hired a lot of mentors, okay, to help me. That's where you wanna put all the attention to, okay? You can't make up for that stuff, okay? You just can't. A lot of people start investing into that other stuff when they should be first investing into themselves, okay? So start small, move fast. It doesn't have to look, you don't have to have all these pretty banners, you know? I mean, what does it even matter if you suck at it, okay? And you're gonna suck at it. You're not gonna be as good at it, okay? You're gonna get better as time goes on, but you wanna make sure you're continually investing in yourself to be the best leader and the best presenter in that room. Okay, so we talked about setup. Okay, and, and again, like I was to reiterate this, not that I haven't beaten a dead horse by now, but setup doesn't have to look super sexy. You just have to get started with it, okay? My advice is have something to write. Most hotels will have a PowerPoint, okay? Most TVs and houses you can hook a computer up to, okay? You can show visuals to. All right, again, the first and foremost thing you're investing into is you're investing into your own transformation. Okay, lastly, help. Okay, who's gonna help you do this? Players win games, teams win championships. 
Players win games, teams win championships, guys. At the end of the day, you're going to need some help. So uh, when I first started doing ev uh, events, my coach and mentor was there to help me put it together because I had no idea what I was doing. I'd been to some events, but there's a difference between attending an event and putting your own event on. So I had a coach and mentor. Um, I had asked some clients if they'd like to be a part of it. Okay, we grow so much as being a leader. I remember my first coach, he said, hey, I know I'm teaching you this for the first time, and I know that you're probably not a master at it, but if you want to be a master at what I'm teaching you, go out and start teaching it. We don't realize how much we grow ourselves just by teaching something. So clients... Invite clients that want to be a part of it, family that want to be a part of it, friends that want to be a part of it, okay? You're going to need some help with putting this together, okay? People want to be a part of a team, all right? Give people an opportunity to be a part of a team, okay? So these are just some basic things, okay, you want to be thinking about, okay? We didn't talk about badges, okay? We didn't talk about lunch. We didn't talk about the after parties and all of these things. We talked about you set an event, you get a venue, you get basic shit set up, and you have help. Let's start there. Okay, let's just start there. Okay, you're not doing one event your entire life. You're going to be doing multiple events. You're going to be doing multiple workshops, retreats. Okay, honor your progression. Honor your journey. Okay, the biggest thing that I've seen with people is that they're not patient with themselves. And that's not being fair to yourself. Okay, you got to be patient with yourself and with your progression. Okay, again, it's the start that stops you. Let's get something going and then we can start to grow from there. All right, now that we got the bare basics and the, and the basic concept I hope you're taking away from what we're talking about is I just need to pick somewhere. Okay, again, it could be a house. It could be if you live in an apartment. Um, some people, they're a part of these HOA associations and they have a building that they can rent okay, for free. Pick a place, usually close by, all right, and let's just start gathering people together. Okay, let's start building the confidence. Okay, confidence comes through experiencing something. Okay, we think confidence is all in the mind. It's not just all in the mind, it's all in the body and mind. The body and the mind synchronize the more we're experiencing things. Okay, so in my next video, we're going to be talking about probably what you're scared of most is how do I get people to show up? How, how, do, I, how do I market this? Okay, I know that's what you're thinking. So we're going to be talking about that in the next video. Okay, hopefully you're inspired about what we're talking about. You got to be strong, guys. Be next gen. Okay, the world needs you. The world needs this. The world needs more in-person stuff. Okay, let's talk about how to get this out to the world in our next video.